Hello, I'm Naima. Welcome back to my channel. I make videos about living with long COVID and everything I learn along the way. Since my last video, I've started taking LDN and so far so good. I haven't had any side effects. It's only been one week, but I will share how I'm doing over the next couple of months. Thanks so much to everyone who has reached out to me to tell me about their experience. I really appreciate it. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about sleep, something that has been so difficult for me since getting infected with COVID. Whether it's that I can't get to sleep, I can't stay asleep, or I'm not getting good quality sleep, there is something often wrong with the way that I sleep. And yet, I've always known that it is something that is so important for recovery. After lots of trial and error in the last six months, I've made sleep a really important priority in my life, and it is slowly starting to pay off. In this video, I'll be talking about why sleep matters, common problems with sleep and long COVID, why long COVID might be causing sleep issues and top tips for getting more sleep. So sleep has two phases. First, we have rapid eye movement, REM sleep. During this time, your brain is still active and you're not getting particularly deep sleep. Then we have non-rapid eye movement or NREM sleep. This is when the body builds bone and muscle, repairs, regenerates tissues and strengthens the immune system. And this part is split into three parts. The first part is awake, second part is light, and the third part is deep sleep. Each offer different benefits at different times of night and we cycle through these different stages throughout the night. In Why We Sleep, Matthew Walker uses information from over 750 scientific studies that have investigated the relationship between sleep and human performance. He argues that if you get anything less than eight hours of sleep and especially less than six hours a night and time to physical exhaustion drops by 10 to 30% and aerobic output is significantly reduced. Sleep forms a really important role in recovery for many illnesses and diseases. For something like a brain injury as part of a stroke, we now have evidence that sleep is one of the most critical ingredients in, in the neural recovery effort. Ongoing sleep quality predicts the gradual return of motor function. Matthew Walker also alludes to sleep as a soothing balm. So REM sleep can take the painful sting out of difficult or even traumatic episodes throughout the day, offering emotional resolution in the morning. This is because a stress-related chemical called noradrenaline is completely shut off within the brain when we enter a dream state. REM sleep is the only time within a 24-hour period when your body is without this anxiety triggering molecule. It's possible that by sleeping more and getting better quality sleep, we're able to let go of the stresses from the day and release built up tension. But obviously that's easier said than done. <laughs> My sleep has never been the same since my initial infection. I used to sleep eight hours at night without fail and it would take me about 15 minutes to get to sleep. On top of that, I drank as much caffeine as I wanted with no issues and this is no longer the case. And struggling with sleep is a huge problem for so many long haulers. So let's talk about some of the issues at hand here. Firstly, there's insomnia. This is where you struggle to get to sleep, stay asleep or struggle to have refreshed sleep. Then there's hypersomnia. This is where you repeatedly feel excessively tired and sleepy during the day. And lastly, painsomnia is another one which I've definitely experienced but didn't have a name for. This is where you wake up in the middle of the night because of pain. It can be really hard to pinpoint whether it's the physical symptoms of long COVID, disturbing sleep, the stress or challenges relating to having a chronic condition that is piling on to exacerbate sleep or a combination of the two. There have been a couple of studies exploring sleep and long COVID in more depth. One was done in July 2022. This one assessed the long-term effects of COVID on sleep using wearable wristbands. There were 122 patients and 588 healthy controls. The main findings were that participants in the group with long COVID had increased awake sleep time and decreased light and deep sleep time. This very much corresponds to what I've experienced. I have an Apple Watch 
watch as I've mentioned before and this tracks my my heart rate and my heart rate variability during the night while I'm asleep. I almost never get any deep sleep since getting long COVID and this has been over the last couple of years. I, I have light sleep and moderately good sleep but never deep sleep. This aligns with the findings from this study as well. The second study showed similar results and it pointed to a need for more understanding and addressing of the pathological issues at play. So what does this mean for us? Well we're not quite at the stage where we have a solution for this but it means that we now know that long Covid is impacting sleep whether as a cause of the illness or as a side effect of the symptoms. <laughs> It took me a while to realise that the impact of sleep or the lack of it was having an impact on my recovery. Before long Covid I could manage six hours of sleep every now and then, even less than that if needed. Now seven, seven hours can completely derail my day and I think I now need about eight to ten hours of sleep and eight is really a minimum. Nine, nine to ten is probably better for my symptoms to be more stable. So here are eight of my top tips for getting better sleep. Number one, establishing a regular sleep schedule. So trying to get to bed at the same time every night, even if it's the weekend, this helps to regulate your body's internal clock and improve sleep quality. My ideal sleep schedule is 11 p.m. to 9 a.m. I try to have a cool down period of about an hour and a half off before I want to get to sleep where I cut down on screen time I read in bed and then do some relaxing activities or mindfulness before bed this for me is yoga nidra meditation or breath work and usually the combination of those will help me to get to sleep or at least be much more ready for sleep the next tip is to create a relaxing sleep environment so trying to get your bedroom to be a comfortable relaxing space conducive to sleep. So making sure the room is cool, it's dark and that it's quiet. I notice that when I spend all day in bed watching stuff or listening to podcasts, I then find it increasingly difficult to get to bed. So I really try to keep my bedroom primarily as a place to sleep. And even if I'm bed bound, I try my best to lie down on the sofa at least. That way I'm, I'm getting outside of my, my room. Avoiding stimulating activities before bed. So activities like being on a computer, watching TV or scrolling through your phone, all of this can stimulate your brain and make it increasingly difficult to get to sleep. The best thing to do is to switch devices off or at least have them far away um, in the room somewhere else. So practicing a relaxing bedtime routine has also been really helpful for me. So it's almost like I'm signaling to my body, now is time to sleep, you'll be asleep soon. This might be having a bath, having a shower, lighting a candle, reading a book, putting some incense on and then doing anything that can help you get to sleep. For me this process can take anywhere between two hours and half an hour if I have a bit less time but the longer the better and the quicker you'll manage to get to sleep. Avoid caffeine. Caffeine interferes so much with my sleep. I used to be able to drink three or four cups of coffee a day and maybe four teas a day and I didn't even think about it. Now I have a coffee really every now and then so I've had maybe two this year and I've switched to decaf and that has had a huge impact on my ability to sleep. It's made it so much easier and I don't have these high caffeine highs and lows that cause me to crash throughout the day and it's really helped me to get to sleep. Managing stress, the hardest one. Stress really interferes with sleep so I try my best to not stress at night and if I'm feeling particularly stressed out before going to bed I might stay in another room and do some journaling where I jot down my thought, come up with a plan of action of what I might do the next next day so that I don't sit or lie in bed for hours thinking and stressing out about things that are outside of my control. Meditation and breath work can also really help with this. If you're really struggling with sleep for a significant amount of time and none of the things that I've listed have helped, then I think if you're in a position to, you can seek professional help as well by speaking to a healthcare professional or a sleep specialist who might have some ways to, to support you with this. Because not sleeping is the worst thing. It's so stressful and it's it's even more overwhelming when you're unwell and you feel like this is a real blocker to you getting better. Lastly, if you can't sleep in the middle of the night, I used to just lay awake in bed for hours and hours checking my watch and getting more and more frustrated when hours had passed and I had not slept. I no longer do that. 
I will leave the room, do another activity for 30 minutes, something like reading without screens, and hopefully that then my mind would start to feel tired and I then return to the room to try and sleep again. And I try and redo that nighttime routine, see if I can get to sleep. What about you? Do you have any top tips that you can add to this list? Please leave a comment below. If you're new here, don't forget to like and subscribe. And you can also watch two of my latest videos on LDN low dose naltrexone which I'm now taking as of a few weeks and natto kinase as well. I'll see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching.